Hello, everybody. Welcome to Late Time Football. Welcome to our match reaction show. It's finished. Real Madrid 2, Osasuna 1. Real Madrid winning the Copa del Rey um, for the first time in, I think, about 10 years. It's been 10 years almost, hasn't it? I mean, I think it's been nine years since the last one, the Copa del Rey. I think 2014. So, the first time in nine years they've won uh, the Copa del Rey. It's a fantastic win. I have to say, I watched the League Cup final. I think this is probably the more entertaining cup final between the two so far that I've seen. Um, it's, it's really end to end. It was magnificent. I think Osasuna gave a very good account of themselves in this game, and they'll feel very hard done by because the two goals were both came somewhat on deflections, and um, you know it's, it's it's things like that sometimes that goes your way, goes against you, and decides big moments and big matches. But Copa del Rodrigo, that's what I'm calling it. It's Copa del Rodrigo. It's Rodrigo is fantastic. Got the first goal in the second minute. Um, Alvinicius was good on that left hand side. Uh, puts up, you know, gets. I think what he was trying to do, and I think he got luck. He got got successful there and he kept trying to do it every time and, he, and it kind of didn't work so that's something for him to think about but the fact is that it worked then in the second minute he gets a nice little uh, run and he goes past Moncayola and he puts the ball in towards um, Rodrigo Rodrigo it's a, it's a deflection is, is important without that deflection probably the goalkeeper saves it but uh, the deflection helps him and it's 1-0 and uh, after that Real Madrid kind of you thought they would take control of the game they never really quite did I think also soon like I said they give a really good account of themselves they're pressing very high very hard. They were making sure that every time they got the ball, they were doing something with it. They were running forward. It wasn't aimless passing. The issue for Osasuna, of course, is the fact that they lacked a proven goal scorer. So you always knew that um, they, had, they had to create lots of chances to get one in. And you don't get that kind of uh, you know luxury against Real Madrid to create a lot of chances. They did get the goal back, though. Again, that goal also technically was from a deflection as well. So deflected cross from one cruise. Um, what I have to say about that goal, though, is I thought the defense, there was a little bit of a lethargy um, from Rodrigo and from Valverde, I think it was was one towards both of them were very lethargic. Rodrigo was out of position, and I think Valverde was one who, was, who should have gotten back and tried to, but he was very lethargic. Um, so it allowed one cruise the time to pick out a cross, um, which he of course fluffed. He didn't really get it right, but because of that laziness, I think that, you know because Valverde was slow to react, so you know he kind of got caught nowhere, and so um, that freed up Lucas Toro to then take that shot. It was a beautiful shot, though, by the way. I think that's the goal. I mean, the fact is that uh, you know that's probably the goal of the of the match really, which is sad. Because that's the kind of goal that you hope would, uh, you know, lead to more. But uh, great goals don't always win you matches. Uh, but it's a fin finish. The finish is really, really good. This, it will be lost in the annals of history. But it's a fantastic finish. Just in that bottom corner, one all. And you're thinking, is there is there a twist in the tail? Can Real Madrid bounce back? They do bounce back. Um, and they got that second goal again. I, you know, at first it looked like it, the ball had crossed the line to me at first. But the two angles that I saw later told you know showed to me no no it's not crossed the line. The second angle didn't look like it crossed the line. But again I was looking at it from a different sort of eye. Like that's not a clear angle. But the third one that they showed from behind the the you know the the from from the from behind Vinicius Junior side I think that that showed that yeah he was in. So it was in um for sure it was, it was a legitimate goal. But again deflection it somehow reaches Rodrigo he finishes it off. It's a good finish. Um and and it's two one and and they win the game. But I will say those that Madrid should have probably scored two more goals. Uh, there was it was a chance, but I think it was three on two, and Benzema really fluffed his pass, and then come away, and then I think it was well, Vinicius then fluffed his pass as well, and they missed that chance to make it three one there, and then right towards the end, uh, Vinicius Junior one on one the goalkeeper. I don't know why he's trying to pass it back to uh, to Benzema. He should be going and trying to take go take it past the goalkeeper. So and though that's important because as much as this cup win will be will be very very celebrated, the fact is they've got a big game coming up against Manchester City, and they can't afford to be so, uh, you know, profligate with their chances. They've got to be ruthless. They've got to be clinical because City will, A, not give them as many chances as Osasuna did. And secondly, if, you know, the amount of chances that they gave Osasuna, if they give that to City, City will convert them. So they need to score goals and they need to make sure they're not going to be so open at the back. So, um, you know, but but that must, you know, that's for later. I think 2-1 is a fantastic uh, result. Um, I was It was interesting that uh, Jumini started today. Again, I thought that was the right decision to start Jumini instead of Modric because, again, it's a big game like this. You don't start Modric and Cruz together. And I hope he does not start Modric and Cruz together. The issue now is that I thought Valverde was, was pretty poor today. It was, his work rate was good, but his end product was not very good. I think it was easy, the weak link in, the, in that midfield three. And so then the question is, do you play um, Valverde? Do you bring in Modric and Cruz together, or do you put Kamavinga and midfield and put some, I you mean, know, maybe Lecho, uh, Rudiger or, or Alaba at left back? And that's a, I, I don't think he will do that. I think he will start. I, I, I think he will start Valverde. You can't play the fun three. You can't play Rodrigo, Benzema, and Vinicius. You can't not play those three. Those three have to start together, no matter what. So then it's like, who's your th midfield three? And um, I don't think it should be Modric and Cruz together because that's just asking for trouble against Manchester City. So you've got to pick one. 
and he's got to decide who's going to be the other two. It will be interesting to see what what he picks. But um, yeah, I thought, I thought Valverde, uh, the occasion might have kind of got to him. It, it's always Valverde is a bit of an enigma, isn't he? He's, sometimes he really plays very well, and other times he doesn't look that good. So I was saying, I thought Danny Carvajal was excellent as well at times in terms of the tracking back, tackling. There were a couple of moments where Chimi Avia should have scored as well towards the end. He could have got that goal if not for Carvajal's, uh, um, you know, intervention. So he had a good game. Um, like I said, Madrid weren't. The thing is, Madrid were giving up a lot of chances because um, Osasuna don't really have a goal threat. Um, the, a lot of those promising openings didn't really result into tangible uh, chances, and that's something that 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 the Real Madrid will have to look at. But uh, Rodrigo Maya the match. I mean, I don't think you can pick anybody else. Can you? You got to go with Rodrigo. Two goals in a cup final. You can't look me. Yeah, you got a bit lucky, but still, you know, two goals is still magnificent, and I think he's my man of the match. But heart goes out to Osasuna. I mean, it's tough. It's a cup final. It's Real Madrid. You know, you, it is tough. But at the end of the day, that's, you know, someone's got to win. Someone's got to lose. And, and unfortunately for Osasuna, they happen to be on the losing end of this one. But, you know, done, done themselves a lot of good. They give a good account of themselves, as I said. It's not going to be much consolation for Osasuna fans. But I thought, you know, you, you played really well. And I think that's that's the best thing that you can say about a team in a cup final. And like I said, it was more entertaining than, the, you know, it's, it's, it's a very entertaining final that I watched. A great entertaining game as well. And, you know, well worth the time. So, if you haven't checked it out, do go back and check out. There's this fantastic match to watch. And, and a nice little tactical battle that, that I love watching. So, anyway, smash a like for Real Madrid. So my congratulations to all Real Madrid fans for winning the Copa del Rey. You know, deserve it. Enjoy it. But don't enjoy it too much for the players because in three days, you've got a massive, massive game that, you know, the whole of, uh, of you know, a lot of fans, a lot of Manchester United fans are counting on Real Madrid. I mean, they're, they're pretty much the last hope to stop Real City from doing the treble. So, um, let's see what happens there. But uh, smash like for Real Madrid, of course, and congratulations to all the fans. Uh, do share your comments on the game, of course. Uh, share your feelings about it, Real Madrid winning a trophy over the season. Do share that, of course. And uh, subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We love your support. I've got a few videos today, so do check them out. And we'll see you again tomorrow with a few more. So take care. See you again soon. Bye-bye.